right. Thank you, Brittany, for that wonderful introduction. And welcome, everybody, to, uh, well, you heard the title. I'm assuming you're all freaking out right now. Um, as you probably all know, last week, Cisco announced major updates uh, to all of their certifications from the CCNA all the way up to the CCIE. It's not even really an update. It's sort of like a scrap everything and come out with completely new stuff. I imagine at this point, everybody's pulling out their hair, soiling their clothes, or otherwise burning down whatever structure you happen to be sitting in right now. So my goal is to be your therapist for the next 60 minutes, to calm you down and to tell you that there is a path to enlightenment and peace over the next eight months. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into what I wanna cover. So my objective here is, is not so much to cover stuff that you could get from Cisco's website or various other places, although we will cover that a little bit, um, but just to sort of give you a couple roadmaps that you can use over the next month uh, or in the next eight months and to answer hopefully whatever questions you've got. So that being the case, uh, if you've never seen any of my courses here at INE before, whatever, here's my uh, lovely face on the slide. Here's some various ways that you can reach out to me. Uh, so if you have questions after this is over, uh, if you need help preparing, uh, if you want to send me a very large money order, whatever it is, here are some ways that you can reach out to me. So let's get into the meat of this. I've got 60 minutes. I'm going to try not to go over that if I can. All right, so let's start with a, a brief 30,000 foot view of some of the major differences between what exists right now and what will exist in about eight months. All right, so let's talk about dates. All right, we'll start with that. So as of today, which is June 25th, 2019, you pretty much have eight months exactly. Well, eight months minus one day, because as of February 24th of next year, so eight months from today, that's when everything changes, okay? So nothing's changing between now and February 24th. Now, Cisco's done something different. You know, if you're familiar with their certifications, what they typically did in the past was that they would make an announcement about a particular cert, like the CCNA routing and switching or the CCIE data center or whatever it might be. And they, in that announcement, they would say, hey, we're doing a refresh or we're doing an update. And then usually, either on the date that they did the announcement or maybe within a few weeks or a few days after which that new or updated cert would become available. And then there would be this overlap period where you'd have about six months in which you had a choice. You know, During that six month period, you could continue to take the old certification or you could study for and just jump right into the new cert. And then after that six month period was over, then the old cert would be retired you couldn't sign up for it anymore. You couldn't pay for it. And at that point, you had to take the new one. Well, this time around, they're doing something completely different. And uh, and I've been in some back and forth communications with Yusef Baji, who's the overall program manager of Cisco certifications. He has some clarification on some stuff. And that was one of the questions I asked him. I said, hey, you know, this is the way you did it in the past, but now it's completely different. Now you're you're announcing in advance, eight months in advance, a whole new certification for everything from CCNA all the way up to CCIE, all of them are changing. And, and yet the certifications, none of them are available right now. They will be available as of February 24th of next year, but for right now, you're just getting the word out, you're getting out the blueprints so people know what will be in those certifications and you know why the change? Why didn't we have like an overlap period? And basically to paraphrase, his response to me was, well, it's because we're not really doing a, a refresh or an update like we did before. This is all new. All the certifications are, are all new. We're basically starting at certification 2.0 for everything and then going from there. So that's sort of why they've changed things. Okay, so that's your dates. So none of these new certifications are gonna be available for you to take until February 24th of next year. Okay, that's the absolute soonest date you could you could take them. Right now, I think it's too early for you to even sign up. Even if you went to Pearson View's website, I suspect that you won't even be able to sign up for these things until probably two or three months prior to that. So my guess would be probably sometime in late November or early December is when you'll actually be able to see on Pearson View's website the ability to sign up on February 24th for one of these new exams. All right, so let's do uh, some sort of high-level comparisons here. So you're probably aware 
that right now to get your current CC name, and, and I'm primarily gonna focus on the routing and switching, although I will bring in some of the other CC names as well in this discussion. Uh, but for routing and switching, you've got two, two choices. What I usually recommend to people is they take the ICMD-1 exam, which is the 100-105, that's also called the CSENT. Uh, so if you pass your ICMD-1, you get your CSENT certification, and that is 45 to 55 questions, and you get 90 minutes to complete that. Then, once you've passed your ICMD-1, then you go back to the drawing board and you study for the ICMD-2 exam, and you can see the exam number right there. That is a little bit bigger, 55 to 65 questions, and you also get 90 minutes to accomplish that. Once you've passed both of those, then ta-da, you've got your CCNA in routing and switching. Now, if you were to pursue a CCNA in something else, um, a couple of the other CCNAs, if I remember correctly, it's the CCNA security and the CCNA wireless. Both of those still require that at minimum, you pass the ICMD-1, otherwise known as the CSENT. So you gotta have that, and then you can skip the ICMD-2 and pursue your CCNA security or your CCNA wireless, and then you've got those. The other CCNAs like CCNA data center, CCNA collaboration, CCNA industrial, as a matter of fact, let me just show you here, it's, it's crazy the amount of CCNAs we're talking about here. All right, uh, let's see, where is it? I think it's right in here. Okay, so you may not have been aware of this, but these are all the CCNAs that are currently available. Um, the only ones that require that you pass the CSENT, the ICMD-1, are the CCNA security and the CCNA wireless. That's it. Any of the other ones, you can go straight to those exams and take and pass those exams. Okay, so let's bring it back to routing and switching though for a moment. So for routing and switching, those were your choices. You could take the ICMD-1 and the ICMD-2, or what I used to recommend, and I still do, is if you've been in the networking industry for like a year or more, and you've already been working with Cisco devices, and you're somewhat familiar with the Cisco iOS command line, you could jump straight to what they call the CCNA Accelerated, which is just one exam, the 200-125. It basically merges the questions from the ICMD-1 and the ICMD-2 into one overall pool, and that is 60 to 70 questions. Once again, you are given 90 minutes to do that. Now, how does that compare with what you will experience after February 24th of next year? Well, Cisco has not told us how many questions total will be on the new exam, the 200-301, so that'll be the new name or the new number of it, but they have told us the duration. They'll give you two hours for that. So I think we can safely assume that this can be more than 60 to 70 questions. Um, don't know how many it's going to be. I assume that in the next few weeks or few months, they'll probably tell us the quantity of questions, but we do know it's gonna be bigger, 120 minutes. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is you might think, oh, okay, well, if there's more questions and there's greater duration, that probably means there's a whole lot of additional things I have to learn. Right? That's the first assumption people make is, oh, okay, well, I probably have to learn everything that's in the current CCNA Accelerate or you know the ICMD-1, ICMD-2, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And that's actually not the case. Uh, Wendell Odom, you're probably familiar with that name. He's written you know many of the official certification guides that come out from Cisco Press. He's currently in the process of writing the official certification guides that will go along with the 200-301. And he has actually publicly stated that his anticipation is that those two guys together will be about 25% less in size, in content, than what's currently out there for the ICMD-1 and the ICMD-2 official certification guides. Hmm, interesting point to think about. So let's, uh, so the long, the, the takeaway from this is that you have until February 23rd, that's your last day to test for any of the three exams you see on the top there, the 100-105 through the 200-125, or any of the other ones. If you're currently pursuing your CCNA data center, your CCNA collaboration, industrial, cyber ops, you know, any of those 10 that we saw before, you have until February 23rd to pass any of those. As of February 24th, poof, they're gone.
You will no longer be able to test for those. None of those exams will exist after February 24th. Okay, so let's take a look at content changes now. There, uh, there, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. And I created a blog, you may or may not be aware of this, uh, which came out a few days ago. So if you go to right here, if you go to blog.ine.com, you'll see it in there. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but I, I lined them up side by side. So I took the 200-125 topics, and then I found the 200-301 topics, and this is what I did. So for example, if you notice right here, when you see two cells that are in white, those are two topics that, that line up side by side. So the names might change, you know, it might be one dot, you know, item number 1.2 in the old and 1.5 in the new, but that's a side by side comparison. Now, if we keep going on from there, over on the right, if you see a cell that's sort of highlighted in like a grayish blue color, that is something on the new blueprint that does not have a corresponding entry in the existing blueprints. So that's something you could consider as a new topic, something that's brand new you'd have to study for. And on the left, clearly you'll see some items here that are in red, they're crossed out. Those are items that there is no corresponding thing in the new blueprint. Uh, so for example, if you look purely at the new blueprint, the new bl blueprint doesn't say anything about knowing what a, a star, a mesh, or a hybrid topology is. Uh, so there's, if we scroll down through here, and you can look at this at your leisure, you'll actually see that there's a lot of stuff in the current CCNA, I'll just call it that, you know, you, ICND1, ICND2, it means the same thing. There's a lot of stuff in the current exam that no longer has an equivalent in the new exam. And so you can scroll through here at your leisure and, and notice that. So there's a lot of stuff in red on the left that's crossed out that isn't on the right. Now, probably as far as new topics are concerned, I would say that the new topics fall into two general categories for the new CCNA. Number one is wireless. Okay, so in the existing routing and switching CCNA, there's no wireless. There's no talk of wireless. Uh, you might need to know what Wi-Fi stands for, but that's basically it. So in the new CCNA, as of February 24th, they've taken a lot of wireless topics and put them in there. And by the way, that raises another point. So as of February 24th, there will just be one CCNA. There's not gonna be a CCNA wireless, a CCNA routing and switching, a CCNA secure. There's just gonna be one CCNA exam and that's it. Now, what's interesting though, is that Cisco has um, a lot of courses on things. Like for example, if you were preparing for a CCNA wireless, they have a course. If you're preparing for CCNA collaboration or cybersecurity or industrial, they have a course in that. Their courses are still gonna be available after February 24th. It's just that those certifications will no longer be available. They'll just be one CCNA and that's it. And you can see here on the right, shows all the topics. So wireless is gonna be something that's new. So if you've been studying for routing and switching, that'll be something that's new. And if we go down to the bottom here, they're gonna have a whole new topic. And this is kind of new among all of them, which is considered uh, uh, programming and uh, what is it called? I don't wanna get it wrong here. So if we go here, automation and programmability. Okay, so if you expand that here, so this is Cisco's official website, CCNA exam topics. It's pretty easy to find if you just Google Cisco CCNA. First hit will be routing and switching because that's probably the most popular of all the CCNAs. When you click on that, this gives you the current routing and switching. But if you click right here where it says learn more, it takes you to the new one. And then if you scroll down and click on the new exam 200-301, that takes you to where you can get to the exam topics, which are the exact same things that I shared with you in my blog. So these are the exam topics for the new exam. Uh, but if you look at my blog entry, which is right here, this is where I line them up side by side, the old and the new. All right, so there's the link to the blog and you guys can get to the blog as well. Now, here's an interesting thing. As I looked through the new blueprint items, 
One thing that I noticed time and time again was that in the current blueprint for ICND-1 or ICND-2, most of the topics, the objectives are describe as well as configure, verify, and troubleshoot. But in the new CCNA, the words configure, verify, and troubleshoot are notably missing from a lot of stuff. A lot of things don't have those words. And that sort of made me think, huh, okay. So does that mean that at least for the CCNA level, Cisco is sort of moving to this new model of, hey, we want you to theoretically know a lot of stuff. We want you to know what this is and why you would use it, what this is and why you would use it. That sort of fall under the describe category. But is Cisco sort of moving away from the actual command line? Are they not really interested as much anymore in actually having you configure this, knowing what the command is to verify that it's actually working, knowing what the commands are to actually troubleshoot it if it's not working? Because a lot of those keywords were missing from the current blueprint. So where did all the configure, verify, and troubleshoot go? So rather than just assuming that, okay, I guess I don't need to know how to configure OSPF anymore. I guess I don't need to know how to configure HSRP anymore or any of these other things. Once again, I took it directly to the source. I, I went to Yusuf, who's the, like I said, the global program manager for all certifications. And I asked him that very question. To summarize or paraphrase his response, don't assume that just because the words configure, verify, and troubleshoot are not listed for a particular bullet, don't assume that they're not there. He assured me that configuration, verification, and troubleshooting is still going to be a part of the new certification exam. So this would be my guide to you. Let me go back to this here. Let's scroll up for a moment and look at some of those things where it's notably absent. Uh, so for example, how about we go down to, let's see, let's find something good here. Okay, look at spanning tree right here. Let's look at this for a moment. In the current exam blueprint, you have to know how to configure, verify, and troubleshoot spanning tree protocols. And the current blueprint, that means 802.1D, which is the spanning tree that was out since like 1980, as well as 802.1W, which is rapid spanning tree. So they want you to know the theoretical about how those things worked, what makes them different from each other, and they want you to know what are the actual commands to get those things working. What are the commands to verify they're working? What are the show commands if they're not working, how to troubleshoot that? And yet over here, notably missing are the words configure, verify, troubleshoot. All we see is describe. And that's why I actually have those words in blue there to really call out that it looks like the objectives of the new exam are kind of different than the objectives of the old exam. Well. Once again, this is a, and I actually point this out to Yusuf. I said, hey, you know, for example, spanning tree, it's missing that. What are we to assume? And his words to me were, don't assume that because the words configure, verify, and troubleshoot are missing, that we're not gonna actually have you do that. So my advice to you would be, if, if something on the left is still on the right, okay, if spanning tree is mentioned in the old exam, and if spanning tree is mentioned in the new exam, if it doesn't say configure, verify, troubleshoot, you should still know how to do those things. And honestly, my philosophy has always been, hey, the, the best way to learn something is to do it. You know, you could read about spanning tree all day long. I'm just taking spanning tree as an example. And you could create flashcards about what is a root port, what is a designated port, what's this timer, but you're gonna learn it best if you get on a switch and you actually make it work. If you get on a switch and you try to break it and you see what happens when I intentionally try to break things. So my advice to you is still learn how to configure all this stuff, learn how to troubleshoot this stuff when it's not working, even if the new blueprint doesn't have the words configure, troubleshoot and verify, you should still know how to do that. You're making, you're taking a really huge risk if you don't. And Yusuf has told me that stuff is still going to be in there. All right, so I definitely want to bring that up. All right, so what are my options? Where do you go from here? So like I mentioned, 
as of the date of this webinar, June 25th, you have eight months and basically you have two choices. You could either study and pass any one of the current CCNAs, I'm calling out routing and switching here, but any one of them, you've got eight months, or now that you know that the blueprint is available for the new CCNA, you could start studying for that in advance. My strong recommendation is to study and pass the existing CCNAs right now. So I'm just gonna focus on routing and switching for the moment. Eight months is plenty of time for you to study and pass the ICND-1 and the ICND-2 exams. You should be able to do that. You know, as long as you can devote like an hour and a half or two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and maybe two or three hours a day on Saturday and Sunday, there's no reason why you should not be able to pass your ICND-1 and your ICND-2. Now, I recognize that there are some of you out there that might have personal situations right now where you say, hey, look, you don't know my life, you don't know what I'm going through or what I have on the horizon, I can't do it. There's just no way I personally am gonna be able to pass my CC in eight months. Okay, that's fine. There is a way for you to start studying for the new exam now, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But let me go to those people who feel like, okay, you know, over the next eight months, I probably could get my CC wireless or my CC routing and switching or my CC security. Let me speak a moment about what that's gonna look like. And as of February 24th, what the benefits will be. There are some serious advantages, some serious benefits of getting your CCNA now, and here's what they are. So let me say, let, let's assume that you polished off and you got your CCNA completed on February 1st. Okay, let's let's say as of February 1st, ta-da, you've passed the ICND2, you're done, you've got your CCNA routing and switching. Okay. So if you get any CCNA prior to February 24th, so whether it be the wireless, routing and switching, data center, whatever it is, you're actually gonna get three things on February 24th, which is really cool. Okay, so number one, let's say February 1st, you pass your CCNA in whatever it is, let's just say routing and switching. Okay, so that exam that you passed is still good for three years. All the CCNAs have a three-year sort of duration and then after three years, you either have to recertify or you lose your CCNA. So let's say on February 1st, you pass your CCNA routing and switching or you pass your CCNA wireless. Okay, well then that means that that is good. You still can claim that you've got a CCNA and routing and switching a CCNA wireless and you get the badge that goes along with that, like right here, here's the badge for routing and switching. So you get to officially use that for the next three years. So You'll, from February 1st of 2020 until February 1st of uh, 20, 2023, you can still claim that. Now, as of February 1st of 2023, 2023, if you got a routing and switching CCNA, you won't be able to recertify that. It'll be gone. That test will be gone. The, the wireless will be gone. The CCNA service provider, that'll be gone, right? They'll all be gone. But at least you will have had that for three years. So that's one thing you get. Here's the next thing you get. As of February 24th, Cisco will actually give you the new CCNA, the 200-301. So even though you didn't ever take that exam, they'll say, you've got it. And so as of February 24th, 2020, you'll have that for the next three years and you didn't even take it. And then you'll get what's called a training badge for whatever the specialty was that you were in. Uh, so, for example, you'll get a training badge for routing and switching if that is what you got your certification in. If you got your CCNA wireless, all right, well, you got your CCNA wireless for three years, you'll have the CCNA, the, the 200-301, that'll be effective as of February 24th, that'll last for three years, and you'll get a training badge for wireless. So, you get those three things. Now, if you were not to get a CCNA. Let's say that the next eight months passes, here we are, February 24th now, 2020, and you don't have any CCNA. Okay, well at that point, you no longer have any options. At that point, from February 24th onwards, your only option is to pass the new exam, the 200-301. And if you do that, you'll have the 200-301, that'll be good for three years, but you won't have a CCNA routing and switching or a CCNA and wireless, you, you lost that opportunity and you won't have this training badge thing in wireless security, routing and switching, you will have lost your opportunity for that as well. 
So that's why I recommend in the strongest of terms between now and February 24th to finish off your CCNA. Even if you're just starting right now, if you haven't studied anything, eight months is plenty of time to go from zero to getting your CCNA. And I'm assuming that a lot of you guys who are watching me right now have already been studying somewhat, a month, two months, three months, but I'm saying, even if you're starting at ground zero, eight months should be plenty of time to get your CCNA routing and switching, security, wireless, whatever it is. All right, so how do you study? Well, certainly if you're studying for any existing CCNA exam, like the existing routing and switching for 200-125, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, here at INE, we have a whole range of stuff. And let me show you, a lot of people aren't familiar that we have this, uh, but for routing and switching, uh, let's see here. Okay, we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we can get rid of that. I'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay. Uh, so if you go to your, your members dashboard and then I'm assuming you, you have an all access pass or you will have an all access pass soon. If you click on the all access pass. So if you notice in the upper left corner here, there's an icon that when you hover over it says curated playlists. If you click on that curated playlists, You'll see that we have some curated playlists for a lot of different things. Uh, if I focus on CCNA routing and switching and I click on that, this gives you from start to finish all the courses we can have that you can follow in order to get your CCNA. So for example, if you're starting at ground level zero, you'd wanna watch this one hour and 49 minute video here on CCNA routing and switching overview and preparation. Then you want to go to this two hour and 20 minute video beginning the Cisco journey. Then another two hours of introduction to networking top technologies. And then you just follow this on down. So now you're going to start preparing for your ICMD1. Watch networking fundamentals. And then go through the entire ICMD1 technologies videos, which is 22 hours of that. And then there's more details on Ethernet, uh, basic network troubleshooting. And then by the time you get done with IP routing basics, then you can take our practice exam. You can actually take this multiple times. Uh, I'm not sure why it says 22 hours. It doesn't take 22 hours to take our practice exam, uh, but you can take that multiple times. While you're going through the ICMD-1, you're, you're gonna wanna lab stuff up. You're gonna wanna practice things. So we got videos here on, on how to create labs, how to use GNS3 to create labs. We also have uh, an ICMD-1 workbook so if you're the type of person that rather than making your own labs and making your own objectives and designing your own lab, you'd rather follow sort of a, a pre-configured lab instructions book, we have an ICMD1 lab for that. So if you go back to your members dashboard and click on workbooks, so right here, here you can see the ICMD1 workbook. And so as you're going through your ICMD1 topics and, and watching the videos, you can be going through this and practicing everything. Then if I go back, now you've got your ICMD1, now it's time to get your ICMD2. And so in the curated, curated playlist here, you can see all the things from beginning to end you can work through to get your ICMD2. So if you follow this, you can get through all this stuff in the next eight months and you can absolutely get your ICMD-1 and your ICMD-2 exam. And then come February 24th, because you've already got your CCNA and routing and switching, like I said, you will automatically be granted the new CCNA. And that's the one you'll have to recertify come 2023 when your three years is over. Okay, so in the event that you weren't familiar with this curated playlist, I'd recommend that you take a little bit of time uh, just looking through that and seeing the courses and available there. Now, what if for whatever reason, you say, you know what, Keith, I got some personal circumstances going on here. I just don't think I'm gonna be able to finish the ICMD1 and the ICMD2 in the next eight months. You know, maybe you're, you're, you're going off to uh, some work study program for the next six months and you know, maybe you're gonna be, you know, whatever that is. You know, maybe you're having a baby and you're gonna say, you know what, for the next three months, I'm not gonna sleep. So I'm not gonna be able to study for any of this stuff whatever it is, how do you study 
for the new CCNA. Okay, so having an exam blueprint, whether it be for CCNA, CCNP, CCIE is great, right? It's a great starting point. You sort of know what the topics are the Cisco is expecting of you. The challenge though, is that when you see a line item in a blueprint, like, you know, study OSPF, you don't really know what the scope and depth is that Cisco is expecting of you. How much of this topic do I really need to study? How deep into the weeds do I need to get to know this thing? So what I always have up until now, what I've recommended to people is, this is where their books come into play. The Cisco Press official certification guidebooks are a great way to answer the question, how much depth do I need to know on this topic? Because my theory has always been, look, the Cisco Press books are vetted by Cisco. They're edited by Cisco. Cisco has blessed them. So if something has this much depth in that book, you can safely assume that's the amount of depth you should study to learn that topic. If it has this much depth, okay, now you need to know you need to study all this stuff. Here's the problem. Cisco does not at this point in time, as I'm recording this and saying this to you, they do not have official certification guidebooks out yet for the new certifications, but they have given us this website right here. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see the website. So there is the link. Uh, so you can take a snapshot of that if you want to. Uh, so this is from Cisco Press. And you can see from their website, they say right here, coming soon. So we see, um, so we've got volume one of the official certification guide for CCNA coming out in September. And we have the second volume, volume two, which will round it out, coming out in December. Now this once again, still leaves you in kind of a dilemma. You say, okay, Keith, well, I wanna get my CCNA as soon as possible. And I, I'm assuming you wanna get your CCNA either because you wanna get into the job market, uh, you want a promotion and your existing job, but that there's some tangible benefit to you to getting your CCNA. And I'm assuming you don't wanna delay that any longer than absolutely possible. Well, here's the challenge. Okay, are you telling me, Keith, that I have to wait I can't even start studying until September because that's when volume one comes out. And you're telling me that all the stuff that's not in volume one, I'm not gonna be able to study that until December when volume two comes out? Absolutely not. So here's what I would recommend that you do. If you wanna get the new CCNA, so let's say you're one of those people that says, hey, on February 24th, I wanna be there. I wanna be at the Pearson View location. I wanna be sitting in front of that terminal and I want to be taking the new CCNA and hopefully pass it on the first day it's available on February 24th. What do I do now to start preparing for that? Okay, well, here's what you can do. And I'll go back to another blog entry that we have. Okay, so this just came out, this blog just came out like 45 minutes ago. So 99% of you guys probably don't even know it exists. So what I did, was I started out by taking, let's just go back to the existing blog. Oops, that's not right. What the heck was that? Blog.ine.com. Okay, scroll down here. So we started out with this and I, I just created this in a spreadsheet. And then I looked at this and I thought, well, a lot of the stuff in the new exam still lines up to existing topics. So there's no reason you couldn't watch our videos and still prepare for probably 80% of what's in the new exam. If it's not in a current CCNA video, it's in a CCNP video series, it's in a standalone video, um, it might be in like a virtualization course we've got. But I looked through this and I thought, you know what? I think like 99% of the stuff in the new exam, even the stuff in blue, these new topics, spine leaf, concepts of power over ethernet. Now, even if we go all the way down here to the bottom, um, automation programmability, this stuff right here, JSON, you know, uh, CRUD, 
Cisco DNA Center, I thought to myself, you know what, I'll bet you that 98% of that stuff you can find in existing INE videos. So that was going to be my initial response to you was, hey, you know, just, just go to INE, just go to streaming, streaming.ine.com and start doing a search on that stuff. Oh, how about a search on JSON? Oh, okay, well, there's, there's stuff that's coming up with JSON. So that was gonna be my initial advice to you, but then I thought, okay, well, here's the problem. If that's what I tell people, for someone who's just starting out, you might not know what keyword to search on, or if you search on a keyword and like six or eight different videos come up, you might not know, okay, what video is really appropriate for me to look at? So that's why we have this new video, this new blog that just came out here 30, 45 minutes ago. So what this is doing is if you scroll through here, all of these topics are the new topics, all right? Topics that currently don't exist in the current CCNA. So for all the topics that matched up, if it's in the new CCNA, if it's in the old CCNA and in the new CCNA, just go through our existing CCNA course. For example, let's take a topic that's not in the new CCNA. Right now, in the existing CCNA, you have to study for EIGRP. So for routing protocols, they want you to know OSPF and EIGRP. So in our CCNA course, we cover both of those. In the new CCNA, there's no mention of EIGRP. They don't want you to know it. They just want you to know OSPF. So clearly, if you're studying for the new CCNA that's gonna come out in February, use our existing course. But when you see topics that aren't there, like if our existing course has a bunch of topics on EIGRP, skip it. You're not gonna need to know that anyway. Now, what this is, is for the brand new topics. For example, in our current CCNA course, there's nothing on virtual machines. There's nothing on necessarily power over ethernet. There's certainly nothing on wireless in our current CCNA routing and switching. So what I did is I took those, those blocks that were blue, the brand new stuff, and, and I, did this, I did the work for you. I lined it up. So for example, let's look at wireless principles right here. This is a bullet point, bullet 1.11 in the current new exam. So what should you watch that we have right now? Well, we've got a certified wireless network administrator course, and specifically, you should go specifically to the video in that course that's titled the RF section, so radio frequency technologies. You should click on that. There's also another video right here for wireless LAN security, which lines up. So if you scroll through this blog right here, this will give you all of our current and existing courses, not necessarily in CCNA routing and switching, but just across the entire all access pass. If you have an all access pass, you have accessibility to every single video we have. And by looking at this video here, this video here, this video here, you will be able to prepare and you'll see here for like 99% of what's in the upcoming CCNA. Now, every once in a while, there was something I found where we just didn't have a video that covered it. Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, this one right here, describe the characteristics, Let me just do a little circle around this. This is one of the bullet points of the new CCNA. Describe the characteristics of REST-based APIs, CRUD, HTTP verbs, and data encoding. All right, well, we don't really have anything that lines up for that. So what I did was, I found on Cisco's website, they have this thing called Cisco Learning Labs, and there's a learning lab called Introduction to APIs. And if you click on that, it has a tutorial on it. It even gives you the ability to practice it given their particular environment. So with what we have and the one or 2% we don't have, you can actually start studying for the new CCNA right now. Now, we will be coming out, that's one of my primary objectives is to come out with a new CCNA course that will sort of reformat some of the things we have and come out with new videos on like automation and programmability, wireless, and all the stuff we don't have. So within the next few weeks, we will be having a new CCNA course. But if you wanna get a head start on stuff, you can use this blog right here and go through it and see our existing material. All right, I think that covers, um, I mentioned the new Cisco Press books, so those will be coming out in September, December. We talked about the new topics. 
I showed you how with our current all access pass and our current videos, you can already get a head start on 98% of the stuff in the new CCNA. Um, so, and I mentioned that ideally you would pass your existing CCNA before February 24th. So the takeaway from this is that there's no need to freak out. Eight months is plenty of time to get either the existing CCNA or to prepare for the new CCNA. We already have all the videos ready and waiting for you. You might have to hunt and peck for them a little bit, but given that blog there, you've got everything you need to start preparing for the new exam if that's what you want to do. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and go to uh, the Q&A and see if you guys have any questions that I have not had a chance to answer. All right, so what have we got going here? Okay, so uh, there's a question here. If we have two or more CCNAs, like for example, if you have CCNA routing and switching right now, and if you have CCNA wireless right now, what will be the new certification? All right, so as I mentioned, as of February 24th, there's only gonna be one CCNA, the 200-301 exam. Okay, so let's say that the right now, you've got a CCNA routing and switching, Let's say that that expires in June of next year. Let's say you got a CCNA wireless. And let's say that expires in June of 2021 or something. All right, great. Well, right now you're sitting pretty. You're not in any, you're not in any situation where you're forced to recertify right now. So what's going to happen is as of February 24th, you'll be granted the new CCNA. So what that means is that if that new CCNA was not to come out, let's say they had never announced anything, well, that would mean that, okay, I got to recertify one of those guys. You know, I can either recertify my routing and switching in June of 2020, um, or I can let that lapse and I can recertify my wireless in June of 2021, but you'd have to recertify one of those two things before the recertification date expired. Not anymore. So as of February 24th, you'll get the new CCNA, you won't have to recert you won't have to worry about recertifying one of your existing CCNAs. That new CCNA you get will be good until February 24th of 2023. So sometime between February 24th of next year and February 24th of 2023, you want to recertify that exam. So that's what that will look like. All right, so someone's saying, is it worth it to keep pursuing a second CCNA level certification at this point? Absolutely. Um, so let's say that you've got your CCNA routing and switching right now, and you don't have to worry about recertifying that because you're gonna get the new CCNA as of February 24th. Now let's say you're thinking about, okay, well, you know, I've been thinking about, or maybe I've been studying for the CCNA security for the last month or two. Should I keep going with that? Absolutely, and here's why. Number one, let's say you get your CCNA security or your CCNA data center before February 24th. So what's that gonna get you? It's gonna get you a couple of things. Number one, you'll now actually be able to claim on your resume or something that you have the CCNA routing, the CCNA data center or the CCNA security, and you'll get the badge that goes along with that. So you'll be able to officially put that badge on your business cards or your resume or whatever, and you'll be able to keep that for the next three years. So you'll be able to claim that. Secondly, you'll get this thing called a badge for a, a training center badge. You'll get a training center badge for security or wireless. Now, Cisco hasn't really said what that's good for or why you'd use it, but you know, honestly, hey, the more badges you can put on your resume, on your business card, the more smart you look, right? <laughs> so you'll get that too. But here's another thing. The, I'm assuming that most of you watching will want to go to the next level. At some point, you'll want to pursue the CCNP. Well, <laughs> here's the sad thing. Um, I used to tell people, okay, if you get your CCNA routing and switching right now, and then you start going for your CCNP in routing and switching, it's a, it's a, it's a jump, but it's not a huge jump. 
It's not like this monumental Mount Everest you have to climb to get from CCNA routing and switching to CCNP routing and switching. Now, once you get your CCNP, if you want to go to the CCIE, then yes, that is a monumental hurdle because from the CCNP to the CCIE, there's a whole bunch of new topics that you don't even hit until you get to the CCIE level. You don't learn about multicast until you get to the CCIE. You don't really learn about quality of service. Most of BGP, a lot of stuff, you know, embedded event manager. There's a lot of stuff that you don't even touch until you're studying for your CCIE routing and switching written exam. So there's, there's a there's a there's a little bit of a jump from NA to NP, and then a massive jump from NP to IE. That's current. Well, guess what? What they've done now, as of February 24th, and let me see here. Let me just use the whiteboard here to sort of describe this. So this is, uh, so this is now, and this is February 24th. Please excuse my terrible handwriting here. So now for CCNA, let's just say you take ICND1, ICND2. So now you've got your CCNA in routing and switching. As of February 24th, that didn't work very well. There's just the one exam, CCNA. That's the 200-301 exam. Okay, now for CCNP, currently, and I'm just gonna stick with routing and switching here, you would take the switch exam. I don't know what the numbers are for that. You would take the route exam, and then you take the T-shoot exam. And that would get you your CCNP in routing and switching. Okay, as of February 24th, there is a professional level exam. I don't remember what they call it, but there's just like one core exam. I'll just call it core. It goes by a certain name. And then you have to pass a second exam, which is a specialist exam. So for example, if you want to get a CCNP in routing and switching, you take the core exam, and then there's like a, an enterprise specialist exam, and now you get your CCNP in, in what they call enterprise. If you want to get a CCNP in wireless, you would take the exact same core exam, and then you take the specialist exam in wireless. And then for CCIE, for now, there's a written exam, and there's a lab exam. And once you pass those, you get your CCIE. Here's where there's a massive change. As of February 24th, to get your CCIE, you pass this exam right here, that core CCNP exam, and then you pass a lab. Oh, what happened to my B? Lab. There is no longer a separate written exam just for CCIE folks. So what that means is that all of the, well, I wouldn't say all, but a big portion of those topics that I used to tell people, hey, you know what, multicast, you know, the real details of BGP, quality of service, you don't have to worry about that until you take your CCIE written exam. No longer. Now those have been moved down to this core CCNP test. So what that means is it used to be that the massive jump was from here to here. Once you pass your CCNP, now you had to really buckle down. You had to learn a ton of stuff to pass the CCI written. No longer, now the massive jump is from here to here. Now, what does this have to do? Let's circle back around to what does this have to do with Jesse's question about, should I pursue a second CCNA? A lot of that stuff, so for example, if you get your CCNA routing and switching right now, and then you decide to go for the CCNP, you decide, okay, now I'm gonna go for this. Well, guess what? A lot of the stuff in this is stuff you would have known in the CCNA security, or the CCNA wireless exam, or the CCNA data center exam. A lot of that stuff is right here. 
So if you get your CCNA routing and switching right now and a CCNA security or a CCNA collaboration, you'll be much better prepared to take the core CCNP exam, which is also what basically is the equivalent of the CCIE written exam. So that's sort of a long roundabout way of saying yes. If you're preparing, if you were thinking about getting a second CCNA, it's absolutely a, a, a good thing to do that. All right, what other questions do we have? Um, so, Mohammed, I already answered your question. I definitely recommend that you pursue the existing CCNA right now and get that done before the new CCNA comes out. Uh, Greg asked a really good question. I have many years of IT experience. Would it be better just to take the one CCNA test? Well, it really depends on your time frame. You, you have to ask yourself, what is my motivation for pursuing the CCNA at all? Right? If, you're, if your objective of getting the CCNA is to get a better job or maybe to get a raise, why not just get it now or you know, in the next six or seven months rather than waiting additional time and passing the new CCNA? On the flip side, um, the new CCNA is probably going to look better to prospective employers. Right, because the new, if, if, if as of next February or early March, I say, hey, I've got the new CCNA, if I'm an employer, now I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, they've got some fundamental routing and switching knowledge. I also know they can implement wireless and help me in my wireless network, and everybody's got one of those. I also know they have some uh, virtualization and programmability and automation experience, and you know, we're either doing that now or we're going to be doing that soon. So the new CCNA actually will be more palatable, more desirable for employers than one of the current CCNAs is. So there's, you know, there's a trade-off between both of those. Uh, so Arjuna asks, if I get the CCNA from the old pattern, so your current CCNA, uh, will all the new CCNPs or which of the new CCNPs will I be eligible to appear? Um, so if you get, let's just look real quickly, because I know there is some interest in the CCNP. Let's just look at that real fast. Oh, if I could type, it would help. All right, so if we just type in here, Cisco, come on, Cisco CCNP. All right. So this takes us to routing and switching, but once again, let's just click on learn more here for the new one. Okay, so let's scroll down. Okay, so this is what I was calling the core. So there actually is the word core here. So if you want to get a CCNP after, so February 24th and after, you would have to pass this, the Encore exam, implementing and operating Cisco Enterprise Network core technologies, and one of these two, or I should say one of these down here. So if you're more of a routing and switching type of person, you would take the, the NRC, you know, the 300-410. Uh, if you're more into... Uh, someone asked me about design. Someone said, what happened to the CCDP? All right, well, if, if design is your thing, you would still need to take the 300-401, and then you would take the designing enterprise networks, or possibly designing enterprise wireless networks, but that's the new equivalent of the CCDP. Uh, now, there are also other things. Now, this is just in the routing and switching track. If we go back a little bit, hold on a second. Let's go back up here to professional certi certifications. So I believe there's a lot more than this. Like what about, let's do security, CCNP security. All right, introducing the new program. So for security, okay, so it looks like we have core exams. So here's a core exam for security. And then you would take one of these concentration exams. So the core exam I was just showing you was basically for the what they call enterprise, which is what we think of these days as routing and switching. Here's another core exam for security. And I'm sure they probably have a core exam for data center as well. CCNP data center. 
Yeah. Okay. So here's a here's a core for data center, and then here's one of these concentration exams. So at the CCNP level, it's always going to be you pass a core exam and whatever the sort of specialty is that you're interested in, and then you pass one concentration exam. Similarly, if you were thinking, hey, I want to pursue the CCIE data center, right? Well, right now there's a CCIE written data center and a CCIE lab exam data center. Well, if you get this 300-601, which is the first exam for CCNP data center, guess what? You've now just passed the CCIE written for data center. So you could take this and then go right to the lab exam, pass that, and then you've got your CCIE data center. So there's no longer separate written exams at the data center level and separate written exams at the professional level. They've sort of merged that, they've collapsed that together. And uh, Heath, you asked me, do I have a study plan uh, similar to what CBT Nuggets has laid out? Yes, so as I was mentioning, so take a look at my chart there and you can use my existing CCNA course on my 200-125 course for any items that have a one-for-one -one correlation. Any item that's in the current CCNA and will be in the new CCNA, you can still study for that in my existing course. And for anything that's new, you can look at that other blog entry and I point you to various other videos we have that will cover those new things. And uh, Tyler says, uh, greetings, Keith. So in, in essence, if I hold a CCNA, like routing and switching or wireless, before February 24th, I will get a three-year refresh come February 24th for the CCNA. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, think about it this way. This would be a cool thing. Imagine if the current CCNA you have right now expired March 1st of next year. So you'd be thinking, okay, I've got between now and March 1st, to I have to recertify. Nope, this is great news for you because if your current certification expires in like March or April or May of next year, you don't have to do anything because as of February 24th, they're gonna give you the new CCNA, which will last a whole nother three years. So that's, for someone whose recertification is coming up, that's really good news. Um, what is a training badge and was it used for? I have no idea. I, I watched a YouTube video in which Yusuf, uh, who like I said, is a global program manager for certifications. He mentioned this thing called training badges, but he even said in the video, he says, this is something that we're fleshing out right now. We're still sort of developing this and figuring out what that's gonna be. So uh, even Cisco at this point in time hasn't completely fleshed out that idea of a training badge. Uh, will the new CCNA guides for the new track be available on Safari Books Online also? I would imagine so. Um, Safari Online Books and Cisco Press are very closely aligned. I don't know if it'll be immediately available as of September, uh, but they should come out very, very soon after that. <laughs> uh, Emmanuel, you ask a very good question. Keith, being very real, do you have to read the entire official certification guide for ICMD1 to pass the exams? Well, here's the challenge. When you go and you sit down for the ICMD1 exam, they have a massive question pool, right? Now you might be only getting 55 questions when you sit down, but that's being pulled from a pool of hundreds of questions. Now the, the entire pool could be anything within that official certification guide. So yeah, when you sit down and get your 55 questions, it may turn out that, hey, based on the test I get right now, I didn't need to study anything in chapters 11 and seven of the official certification guide. I didn't get anything in that. But you never know, you never know. So unfortunately, the real answer is yes, you really do need to read the entire book. I know it's massive, like 500 pounds in weight, but you gotta read that whole thing. You gotta create your flashcards because you never know, just like Forrest Gump gets, right? Cisco certifications are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So it's just the way it is. Um, will packet tracer still be in use with the new CCNA or should we migrate to GNS3 sooner? Mm. 
I think you should probably migrate to GNS3, and, and here's why. The, um, the, one of the, the problems I've always had with Packet Tracer was in the switching arena. Packet Tracer is okay for routing, but for switching, it's kind of limited. Um, and so I always said, hey, to really get good with the switching topics in the CCNA, you should go to GNS3, or actually what you should really do is do like viral or INE racks, get your hands on a real switch. Well, the switching topics are actually being reduced. If you look, if you compare the two blueprints, there's a lot more switching material that you have to know now, not as much switching material that you have to know come February. So you don't really have to worry about the packet tracer switching limitations, but if you wanna practice any of that automation and programmability stuff, that's where like GNS3 or Viral or Eve would really come into play. Now, I don't think from a CCNA perspective, I don't think they actually expect you to get hands-on experience with REST APIs and crafting your own JSON verbs and stuff like that. That's more of, you know, know what it is, be able to recognize it. Um, but in general, I think Packet Tracer will still be appropriate, but it's probably better to move to GNS3. All right, let's just do uh, two more questions and we're running out of time here. And then any unanswered questions, I'll, uh, I'll create a blog post or something and, and get to those. Let's just look here. Uh, okay, so uh, Kavir says, I'm, I'm new into networking, currently in a help desk position. Should I go the two exam route before the new certification? Yes, uh, like I said, even if you're starting at ground zero right now, hey, you know, even if you're working in a grocery store right now and you don't even know what the word networking means, you just wanna get into that and make some more money. Even if you're starting out at ground zero and you know nothing about networking, eight months should be plenty of time to get your ICND-1 and your ICND-2. And that is what I would recommend to you, you people. Um, let's see here. And last question here, sort of skipping around. Okay, here's here's a good question from Daniel, and I'll I'll end with this. So Daniel, excellent question. You said, wouldn't getting the current CCNA hurt you if you plan to get the CCNP under the new cert? but you skip the new objectives covered in the new CCNA, you would have to go back and cover the CCNA objectives plus the new CCNP objectives. Here's the thing, as I sort of drew out there, whether you're talking the current CCNA or the new CCNA, either one, there's a huge difference between the associate level and the professional level when the professional level exams come out in February. So there's no avoiding it. Whether you get the new one or the or the current one, there's still a lot of studying you're gonna have to do to prepare for your professional level certification. You're just not gonna be able to get away from that. Um, the other thing is, is that I found, and I, I want to show this to you guys too, and then I'll, I'll wrap this up. If you look at, where is it? 200-301 overview. So right now, the ICND-1 exam doesn't really have any prerequisites. You know, I was actually being honest. If you're working in a gas station or a grocery store or you're a chiropractor and you're thinking, I wanna learn about networking, you can literally start with the ICND-1 exam. They start with binary and the, low, the OSI model. Everything starts out right there. Not so with the new exam. Look here under the 200-301, uh, where was it? There was something about prerequisites. And technically, it doesn't have any prerequisites. Right here, look at this. Prerequisites. There are no formal prerequisites. So that's their way of saying, hey, look, you don't have to pass another exam before you take the new CCNA. But it says CCNA candidates also have basic knowledge of IP addressing, 
a good understanding of networking fundamentals. So nowhere in the blueprint does it mention binary. Nowhere in the blueprint does it mention the OSI model. A lot of that really basic fundamental knowledge is no longer in the CCNA. And yet, that's still stuff you would need to know to understand these CCNA level topics. Um, so that sort of circles back around to, I still recommend that people pursue the existing CCNA unless there's some reason where you just really think you're not gonna be able to do it in the next eight months. All right, everybody, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. And for any questions I didn't get to, I, I will answer those questions, you know, online in a, in a forum or a blog or something like that. Thank you all for watching. I hope that this answered a lot of your questions. I hope this set you at ease as far as what your path and sort of your, your goals can be. And thanks for watching and look forward to joining you on our next webinar.